So I think you said the Ben system is what the, your technique for memorizing cards has been. Named. That's right. Can you tell us a little bit more about your your technique and exactly how you do it? Well, it's not really a system in its own right. In the early days, I used to complain when people started calling it the Ben system because I thought that's a really silly thing to stop call it. But then they stopped calling it that, and I was sort of upset. So I said, no, yeah, please go ahead, call it the Ben system. But it's basically an expansion of what they call the Major system. It's just about turning the things you're memorizing into pictures and it's an alphabetic code so when you're looking at a three digit number for example the first digit is a consonant sound the second digit is a vowel the third is a um, another consonant so one six nine one means to six means a nine means b so i imagine a table and you can see how my imagination works because I was struggling for an example under there's a table in front of us now. Mm -hmm. But that's one. And 387 would be microphone mm -hmm. because 3 is my, 8 is I, 7 is K. Mm -hmm. So how many different images and locations along a route do you actually have memorised to help you perform this? I have 2,704 images memorised. That's enough for each combination of two playing cards. And obviously I use a thousand of those same images for numbers and 1,024 of those same images for binary digits, because I do them in chunks of 10, as I said. Mm -hmm. And these locations throughout, um, these, these locations that you use to, to walk around and help visualize these objects, where are these based? I think one of them is your grandmother's house, one's <laughs> not, is another one not another. That's right, I said that in an yeah. interview once, my grandma's yeah. house in Toton. That's yeah. one of, I think, 68 journeys I've got in my mind at the moment. Yeah. They're all 26 locations long. Some of them are, there are multiple ones around different places. There's one around Kingston upon Thames, which is another place I've been nostalgic about being back in Waterloo, because that's the way you get the train to go out to there. I was a student there in 94, 95. And so I have a couple of journeys around there. I have plenty around Nottingham, Derby places where I've lived, houses where I've lived in the past, the house I grew up in, more recent places I've lived, mm -hmm. places I've worked as well. All, any, all it really needs is locations you could say have a room here outside in the corridor down the hall into another room i like the ones when they go upstairs or there's a bit of variation in the route so they may going up along sideways down it makes them easier to remember how, how often do you have to mentally revisit these locations in order to avoid forgetting them or do you think they're drilled into your head they're not for, drilled for into my head as much as they should be the very earliest ones are my the first the first four journeys that I have on my list, I can do pretty much straight away. I've been, I've not been doing memory stuff as much or as rigidly as often as I should be just lately. And I'm finding that some of the later journeys, when I try to use them, I've, I can't figure out where all the places are. I have to sit down and think hard about them beforehand. If I was practicing regularly, they'd be set in my brain. As it is, some of them are a bit vague and dodgy. Mm. 